grew up in New Zealand <laughs> um, and uh, actually found your first passion in radio. I did. So being mic'd up is not I new did, to you. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, got your first gig in radio at the age of 17. Um, you then moved to the other side of Australasia and with your, with your parents at a pretty young age and landed in WA, uh, you know, no, a for not. foreign girl <laughs> in a foreign land. Um, and in actual fact, got a gig in radio in Geraldton, which is mm. a very small town mm. in the middle of nowhere. Mm. Um, you've said that it was here that you say you learn about the importance of resilience and adaptability. Tell us a little bit about that experience mm. and what that life lesson mm. was about. Um, there's something um, naive and sweet about having a lot of optimism and thinking you can do anything. And one of them was leaving um, my first job in radio in New Zealand with a fuck New Zealand accent <laughs> and arriving in a very small town uh, that um, uh, th that's major export or what it was known for was cray fishing. So there was a lot of cray fishermen. It was as sophisticated as I was. Uh, and and I, got a, I got a gig in radio. They were really, really desperate in this small town and I had an incredibly thick New Zealand accent and they hated it. They absolutely hated it. Um, so they, they weren't particularly welcoming. So I had to learn very quickly that I needed to pivot and adapt. So I um, you know, went about learning this Australian whining, drawling sort of <laughs> accent, which at the time was really difficult. And I was fine, I did it, you know, and I sort of thought, well, if I can do that, I can you know, get through most things. And I was okay until I'd either get pissed, not pussed, or I was around other Kiwis, <laughs> and then I'd just go straight back into the accent again. So, um, but, but, but the point was, you know, self-awareness, so important. And, and how I saw myself and how others saw and heard me were really different. So something cottoned on then and I thought, mm, maybe not assume. Always always sort of be learning and listening and, and yeah. Visa's got, I think, eight innovation centres around the world and the whole point of those is to bring others in so that they what is it? What is an innovation centre in, in Visa's? In Visa's world? Um, well. it, is, it is a co-creation centre yeah. where you can get rapid innovation and obviously using our APIs, our technology. Co-creation with who? With Visa. Uh, no, no, sorry. Sure. Uh, oh, clients, issuers, merchants, um, other software organisations. Somebody can come along and just... Anybody push. can come along. I mean, you obviously need to get a pass to get in, but, but it, it is open. I, I mean, v the Visa Net, which is the technology, the rails that uh, underpins our business, uh, is the, the whole purpose of that is it's an open, scalable, massive technology platform. Yeah. And when did Visa start this process of opening up. I think mm. there's a perception that big mm. companies are closed networks. Mm. Yeah. It's kind of an important message to get out that yeah. Visa's open for business to the developer community. Absolutely. And therein lies the opportunity that I have, which is why I'm at Visa, because yeah. most people think Visa issues credit cards or sets yeah. rates and fees. We don't. We don't have anything to do with that. Issuers, banks, financial institutions do that. What Visa does is powers the network, allows the payment to take place. Uh, we process 65,000 transactions a second. Um, you know, we've got 3.2 billion cards in uh, circulation that are issued by issuers, but we're ensuring that those can be authorised, cleared and settled 100% of the time, every time. Yeah. So it's the rails, the technology. And for someone who loves marketing and brands and unlocking the potential of brands, I took one look at Visa and thought, if I've worked in banking for the last 10 years, and whilst I wasn't deep in payments, I was, I was more of a generalist, and I, I didn't know that, then I can't be the only one. Given I'm blonde, I thought maybe I was the only <laughs> one, but then I learned I wasn't. So the point is that there is so much to the Visa story that's yet to be told, so watch yeah. the space. So a lot of people don't know that VisaNet is what it is and what it actually allows. So we've just created a new campaign. It's called That's the Future We're Working On. And it's absolutely about the Internet of Things. Um, it's not too far away before your, your car is connected to, to payment devices, as will be your fridge. Um, we've already got wearables happening. Biometrics are almost here. Uh, so, so being able to tell that story and educate the marketplace and bring our issuers along with us um, is probably what I'm most excited about. The two young guys you saw up here earlier, um, Will and Mitch, uh, who are sensational boys. Um, they've formed a band called Side. Um, we heard their song. We loved it. That's the future we're working on. So we've licensed their, their music to play on, on all of our ads going forward just to help them, obviously. Um, not that they need much help. They're, they're pretty cool. But <laughs> if anything, they might help us with some cool factor. But uh, uh, so They so did win Triple J Unearthed. I, yeah. well, did they win it? I voted for them. I don't know whether they've won. Did they? Oh my God. That's what we're calling it. Well, they should. That's what we're saying they should have won. Place. Good. <laughs> Love it.